I titled today's conversation mind map, Detachment is Bliss. So it's very beneficial in our day-to-day lives to be able to consciously detach from experiences of undesirable conditioning. And more accurately put, consciously detaching from identification to subconscious beliefs that result in experiences of undesirable conditioning. I refer to this as being conscious of subconscious polarization and conscious depolarization, inspired by the book The Kabbalion. Now, in Tuesday's video, we discussed allowing ourselves to experience the first-class journey to the destination, which was built upon Sunday's video, where we discuss it in detail. I'll link in the description to those videos also for your benefit. So, to facilitate the first-class blissful way of life, which is also the path of least resistance, I encourage practicing conscious depolarization, which is detachment from unnecessary identification, to remain abiding in and operating from your ideal state of consciousness, by which all that is ideal is allowed to manifest automatically without unnecessary conscious effort. By applying what we're talking about here today, mind is also further purified from false beliefs of control to further facilitate the first-class blissful way of life. In the Kabbalion, it states, Everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature but different in degree. Extremes meet, all truths are but half-truths, all paradoxes may be reconciled. Now this is referring to experiential life in the start, and ascending to the absolute level of life where all is reconciled as one, and there is no distinction. So consciousness is truly one, and what emerges from the formless one through mind is the world of life experiences. So we can say then, upon reflection of this quote, everything may appear as experiences of dual, poles, opposites, while at the absolute reality, it is truly identical in nature, appearing through mind as different in degree for experience. For example, you may say, I am in France, and I may say, I am in Canada, yet Where we truly are is here. Or what appears as you and I is truly here. Satchit Ananda, truth, consciousness, bliss. So now increasing frequency of living this blissful way is facilitated through the practice of intentional depolarization or detachment as applicable which is living from beyond trying to ignore or pretend like undesirable experiences are not appearing, rather to cease inharmonious judgment to appearances, to release corresponding beliefs in mind, to purify the subconscious mind from those beliefs, and remain abiding in your ideal state of consciousness of bliss and fulfillment. John 7.24 Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. So we remain highly conscious of experience and conscious of identification to undesirable beliefs looking to be released, revealed through experience which are apparent by emotions or thoughts or both. And if undesirable beliefs are about to become reactivated, We depolarize in that moment by which identification to those beliefs are released as you remain truly unmoved at the absolute level, yet transform the experiences accordingly to what resembles more of the absolute level. As Neville Goddard once said, we must begin to take life consciously, for the solution of all problems lies just in this. The second man. The Lord from heaven in all of us is trying to become self-conscious in the body 
that he may be about his father's business. What are his labors? To imitate his father. We experience this as body may move, world may move, mental phenomena that results in all moving may appear consciously chosen, yet you, the I, remains unmoved, yet present and aware throughout the transformational act remaining abiding in your ideal state of consciousness from which the experiences change accordingly. In the Kabbalion it states, light and darkness are poles of the same thing, with many degrees between them. So now we know if we walk into a room and there's a dimmer switch for the light, we have the option to choose the degree of light in the room to our desire. And having that option, one might not always choose the maximum brightness or completely off, unless that is what they desire. So nothing to be polarized to here. We flow in this regard effortlessly. And here's the key. You always have an opportunity to flow effortlessly anywhere. If you don't believe it, that's inner talking, which may be changed. Thus, even in environments where one may once believe they did not have the ability to do so, they reveal it. The belief that seems to deny this is in the subconscious mind. See, flow is your true nature. The I is naturally allowing of the flow of changing experiences. Yet it remains unmoved by experiences. Thus, all we are doing here is embodying the nature of the I which by embodying the nature of the I, the mind is purified of all that is not representative of the unconditional I in this regard. For example, I live in a big city. I do everything from home and my workplace is very flow-based. Where it's not as chaotic as one might think, it appears downstairs as I live downtown. If I head out for a walk, one may think that others are moving around in a chaotic fashion. Now, this does not mean that I need to force my body to move like how one thinks they're moving, nor do I get in their way if I remain in my flow, because the environment corresponds to reflecting our inner state as all eyes at the absolute level are one eye. Now, one may seem to forget this in certain environments, and more accurately put, Identify with an untrue belief of separation, let's say in that moment. Thus, they are not being consciously aware of this. Rather, identified with a subconscious belief and relating to the environment accordingly. This is where polarity comes in. The environment can't change your flow. You can only allow it to either consciously or subconsciously change your flow. By being aware of what you are thinking feelingly in relation to the environment, you can know the experience and know yourself and adjust it inside and the environment reflects accordingly. And then you can adjust it to your style of flow. Before knowing this, let's say I walked by the main subway station area downtown at 5 p.m. when the office buildings were emptying. There would be a large crowd and it would feel like I was going to run into people and I would adjust to fit what I was experiencing, which was a result of identification to an undesirable subconscious belief. See, I would polarize to the experience of the environment through the reactivation of a subconscious belief from which I would move automatically accordingly, only in a way that I would not consider to be ideal. The belief could be conditioning related to whatever. Then upon understanding polarity, I remain consciously aware of what I was allowing myself to be polarized to, a subconscious belief in relation to appearance. And I would depolarize myself in that moment, and then I would choose my own pace somewhere within a range of one way or another. Then how it appeared was smooth flow in the crowd, and I did not slow anyone down, People let me be in my flow, and I let them be. The same is to be said, for example, in consulting. If I think that a client is appearing to be more in a chaotic pace, I am aware of what I'm thinking and what I'm about to be thinking feelingly upon, 
and I release identification to any belief that is not true to how I imagine them to be ideally, thus remaining in a flow state, and they appear to adjust to that flow state. So we can see somewhere within the range of chaos and order is an ideal flow range for you to experience the environment beyond being polarized to one way or another and then adjust it accordingly like a sliding scale. Let's talk about how you can apply this as well. Three keys to consider. Number one, nothing appears to polarize you. Nuance point. Not only is the I beyond polarity, only conscious consent or subconscious belief within can result in appearances seeming to polarize you. Polarization thus is a conscious act or reactivation of a subconscious belief or a formation of a new belief. So it's beyond the experience where belief is formed. And that I mean, it's how we relate to the experience that forms the belief. Number two, how you imagine the experience to be changes the experience. Number three, the I is truly blissfully depolarized. By I, this I am referring to your sense of self beyond body and beliefs in mind. Hence why I titled this mind map, Detachment is Bliss. The Kabbalion says, A knowledge of the existence of this great hermetic principle will enable the student to better understand his own mental states and those of other people. So what initiates a person's mental state? Well, a preference to abide in that particular mental state. And if this is true, why would one not easily continue to abide in the chosen mental state? Well, this is because they allow themselves to be polarized and change their mental state subconsciously through a subconscious belief. And there's nothing wrong with beliefs as there are many that are helpful and related to your ideal mental state as they automatically orient attention. What I mean is that a state is a body of beliefs that automatically determines where attention goes. For example, one in a state of flow of, let's say, a professional dancer will automatically have body and attention go in the direction of a successful performance. This is why we also say energy flows where your attention goes. It happens automatically from that state. This is what I mean when I often say everything happens ideally automatically. So I don't know anyone who walks around and consciously says, let's become polarized so I can fluctuate into undesirable states of consciousness. It happens subconsciously although they might not be consciously aware that they're allowing themselves to fluctuate into different states rather than remaining in the chosen state from which everything happens ideally automatically. They polarize to an experience via subconscious beliefs and fluctuate into other states accordingly. It says, they will see that these states are all matters of degree and thus seeing this, they will be able to rise or lower the vibration at will to change their mental poles and thus be master of their mental states instead of being their servant and slave. So again, nobody I know consciously walks around desiring to be a slave to undesirable mental states. They rather allow themselves to change their mental states through polarization. Now let's talk about how to practically depolarize. If in the moment you are about to be polarized, you can catch it subtly before the belief activation with intuition. At that moment, drop all identification to realize that the I is already blissfully depolarized and abide like that till you are clear from that identification. Then you know what to do or not do ideally as a result of remaining in your ideal state of consciousness. You can also drop identification by asking the question, to whom do these emotions, sensations, or thoughts arise to? 
This brings you to the I, which is not the body or personal identity. Then abide in that feeling for a bit. It's a meditation to abide as the self. And you may find, as I do, the feeling of bliss as the bliss neurotransmitter anandamide, which derives from the Sanskrit word ananda, is known to be released during the stillness of a meditation. Then you are free to relate ideally to the experience and transform it accordingly. So by depolarizing, you realize you actually transcend the beliefs and thus release identification to the undesirable ones. This is also how you purify the mind. You purify the mind by releasing identification to embody the true unconditional nature of I. And so it says, like and unlike become so faint that it is difficult to distinguish between them. Courage and fear come under the same rule. The pairs of opposites exist everywhere. Where you will find one thing, you find its opposite, the two poles. And it is this fact that enables the hermitist to transmute one state into another along the lines of polarization. See that part there? And it is this fact that enables the hermitist to transmute one mental state into another. So here, practically speaking, we ascend to the absolute level for a moment where there is no experience of duality, where all is reconciled as one, and there is no distinction. To reemerge from the formless one with mind purified, to witness the world of experiences transform. That is the power of practicing depolarization. Not only can you adjust mental states easily, you'll also release identification to beliefs that result in challenge of adjusting mental states. And you'll be able to remain in your ideal state of consciousness without being polarized, as there's no belief that could polarize you to experiences, and you'll flow first class accordingly. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I acknowledge my formless nature. I acknowledge that I give form through imagination. I realize that I exist beyond the world of experiences. Upon acknowledgement, I automatically transform the world of experiences to reflect my true nature. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.